not to take anything away from what he did, but the reason why I was really frustrated with that coming out is, is we're again trying to cloud the issues of a campaign. What are the yeah. political issues that are actually being debated during this campaign and not the ethical and moral issues of the candidates? But that's me. And I guess you could say the person who released it did not release it because he was upset about it, but because of politics. Yeah, there's it was, probably it was, a political motive behind it. it. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you didn't, you weren't upset about it before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. But you might know a lot of other people who could be accept, so why not release it? Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because time is really, time is really interesting because I would say that I became more educated about racial issues um, around 2012. Because that's when Tumblr was really popular and a lot of social issues um, were being expressed in Tumblr and even Twitter. Twitter came about a bit earlier, but um, I noticed Tumblr um, had a lot of posts about social and racial issues. And you actually realize to yourself, like, I never knew this. And then um, there's also the whole women's movement. The I don't know if it was the third the wave. The Me Too of, movement. Or or, yeah, yeah. yeah. So social media plays a huge role. Um yeah, and I feel like I'm more forgiving of people who've done things in the past because I was looking at one of my yearbooks. This was my grade 8 yearbook. Mm-hmm. A guy. So there are a lot of compliments. Some of them are like, oh, you're so smart. Um, oh, you're so sweet. And then um, there's this one that says, you're brown. <laughs> you're okay. brown. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And then I just kind of look back at it. And then I probably never thought of anything about mm-hmm. it when I was in grade 8. But now I just kind of look at it and I'm like... That's really, it's really funny that we just let these things slide when we were younger. I guess we were also ignorant. And also, like, what age is it not appropriate? Like, any age is not appropriate Mm -hmm. to to most people, but, like, there's certain things about what you do in high school that you kind of forgive because you're young and stupid Mm -hmm. and you're not fully developed yet. We know your brain is, your prefrontal cortex is not Mm -hmm. fully developed in in order to think about consequences and stuff like that. That's why a lot of stupid things happen in high school. And that's why we have a criminal justice system that has Youth Offenders Act. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess some of that has to be taken into account as well. But I just feel like sometimes... Um, language is so people are so sensitive about language they're I, I would hate it for people not to feel free to express themselves mm-hmm. and speak their truth about things because that's when you get people hiding what they really feel and you know I mean you could think about the whole Trump mm-hmm. issue where all these people hiding in the in the wings just just waiting Um where we never heard from those people, um, maybe because it wasn't time. And now you've got all the all those people coming out and, and saying whatever they feel, feeling like they can say whatever they want. Um, maybe it would have been better to have you know debate and discourse about it. Hundred percent, like real, mm-hmm. real, uh, the real ability to talk about things and not to just keep it to yourself, mm-hmm. because. Anytime you do that, then it starts just welling up within you and mm-hmm. it gets more and more extreme, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you feel like you're not being heard. Mm-hmm. I hate to pause this really great conversation. I don't know how we got into this to start the know, podcast. It's never happened. <laughs> but, but we, we oh, haven't even saying. introduced our guest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I should apologize because... I did Don't gradu- apologize. I, I did graduate with a political science major, so oh, hey, this is <laughs> so great. This is expected. This is, this is fantastic. Uh, Ashley Prasad, uh, grad 2013. Yeah, yeah. 2013. Yeah. That was a good year. Yeah, it was a good year. I, yeah. I wouldn't know. We were the no, best we grad know. class. Is that correct? You're the best class ever. Yeah, grad class. Yeah, best class uh, ever. One of the best. Yeah, oh, I would have thank to you, say thank so. You. I, thank I you. have a lot of regrets, actually. Because I think, did I teach you science? Science 9, yes. Science 9. Because at that time, and, you know, teachers, good teachers, I think, have (laughs) a lot of regret of how they taught in the past. Mm. Because I thought, well, that was such a good year. I could have done so much more with you guys. Like, (laughs) the stuff that I'm doing now, but I just didn't realize it at that time or hadn't figured it out yet. Do you know what I mean? I didn't notice. I I went to a teacher's (laughs) workshop 
where uh, the instructor said that the best teachers feel bad for last year's class. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, because if you're a good enough teacher, you're always improving on what you do, mm-hmm. and therefore your current product is much better than your last year's product, and then therefore you feel bad for the class you just taught. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have to apologize to you, actually, <laughs> for being not a, as good a teacher as I think I am now, and it'll never end in terms of improvement, which is what makes this job so interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay. I probably got an A in that class. <laughs> <laughs> so, so after high school, you went into political science right away? Um, so I didn't know why I wanted to major in, actually. Um, my dream was always um, to be some sort of scientist um, that would create solutions to tackle climate change. Mm. But then I realized I wasn't good at science or math, <laughs> so I couldn't do that. So um, I actually just, uh, yeah, I just did political science on a whim, but it turns out I loved it. And a lot of things are political. Um, mm-hmm. The environment is a political issue, too, and there's environmental policy. Um, yeah, so I ended up loving political science. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. interested to know in your journey there. So, Mr. Kung, kind of, uh, we've never met. Uh-huh. This is our first time meeting, um, for our listeners, just mm-hmm. to know that. So, Mr. Kung kind of prepared me for who you were and, oh. and, and you know, what we're going to be talking mm-hmm. about. And I'm interested to know, based on what I think I know about you, how did you go from being a grade 12 student at Delview to who thought they were going to go out and become a climate warrior and battle climate change to going into political science. Like in grade 12, when you started applying for universities, what were you applying for? What were you aiming for? And then when you got there, how did everything change? Oh, so this is really interesting because it kind of ties in with the organization I'm volunteering um, for. Um, So I've always, I think my problem was I always just did things by ear. I didn't really plan. Mm. So I just went with the flow. So I just thought to myself, oh, I'll go to SFU because I live close to the school. But it ended, it ended up being um, SFU Burnaby that I had to mm. um, attend. Um, so I just applied to SFU. And I honestly didn't know what did, to do. Did you apply for science, do. though? No, it was actually just a general. For arts. Yeah, okay, it was yeah. general studies, essentially. Mm-hmm. It was called explorations. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because in grade 12, I realized I wasn't good at science. And it was just, ah, it hit me, and I just didn't know what to do. So right. um, I realized that, okay, I just have to see, like, what's out there. Like, what am I really interested in? What am I, mm-hmm. like, what else could I be passionate in? And it did end up being politics, too. That's cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, sometimes you, well, I know my experience was the same, the filtering process of this is what I'm interested in. Am I good at this? And then all, in the end, you end up doing what you want to do because you, you kind of have the, the interest and the skills that you've built along the way because you have those skills because you were interested in those things. And then eventually you, you end up somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Like yeah. when I was a kid, I wanted to be a commercial airline pilot, mm-hmm. and I was never good at math. I really disliked math, mm-hmm. and then I realized there's a lot of math involved. And I remember at the mm-hmm. time being really disappointed. It's like, well, there's math involved. How am I gonna How am I gonna do this this job that I love? But I was still a kid. I was like, you obviously don't love the job. Right? Like a person who actually enjoys math would love the job. I mm-hmm. wouldn't love the job if there was that much math involved. <laughs> so you kind of build up in your mind what you think something is, and you find out that the reality is quite different, and you find out, oh, maybe maybe that's not what I'm passionate about. Maybe yeah. I'm not yeah. a passionate yeah. commercial airline pilot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which is like probably the best thing to do in order to figure out what you want to do is to try it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Try something as close to it as possible. Yeah, that's... Which is probably something in your book, right? Um, maybe. I think so. <laughs> well, um, the other thing is that I feel like we weren't exposed to that many careers yeah. um, when we were children. Like, we just know of things like a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer. Okay, so... <laughs> so is this from your parents? Like, yes. Did your parents ever... Yeah. <laughs> I had the same experience. Yeah, so you just think, like, okay, that's the only field you can go into. Right. I, like, I never knew there's something called an anesthesiologist. I didn't even mm-hmm. pronounce that correctly. But, mm-hmm. um, and there's so many jobs out there, like a technologist. And um, and I feel like in my culture, trades is kind of frowned upon. But, or okay, I'm not going to say my culture. I don't want to blame my entire culture. Maybe my family. Um, I f- 
Yeah, it seems like trades is kind of frowned upon, but there are a lot of good jobs out there and jobs that you would like to. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like I should have been exposed to more careers or jobs, but yeah. um, but there there is some just, there's some cultural pressure to it. Yeah, like I know <laughs> I know um, I'm Chinese, so mm-hmm. um, my parents definitely, and they they would compare mm-hmm. with other parents and all mm-hmm. of that kind of thing that happened in. Um, Amy Tan's book, <laughs> Joy Luck Club. Oh, That's I like read that. I read that. Part of that was probably my life. Um, but yeah, there's there's pressure that way. And um, yeah, certainly they would always highlight, oh, your, your cousin, look. Oh, he's a doctor. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, they would highlight certain people that they met who were doctors or successful mm-hmm. people and that's kind of what they were pushing me for. But, you know, you're you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You got to find your own way at some point. Yeah. It's not them who's going to, I mean, they, they mean the best for you, right? They, they want you to have something stable that mm-hmm. brings in some in- income that makes you feel um, like you've been successful, but mm-hmm. you got to find your own way. And there's, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Um, but when you find a career and you find something that you love to do, I think that has to be first. Do you Mm -hmm. love to do it? Second, Mm -hmm. do you do it well? Mm -hmm. You know, third, can it make you money? Mm -hmm. Right? Like you have to love it first. Then do you do it to a high level? Then can you make money? And that's not to say like some people at different stages might mm-hmm. need to make money first, right? Sure. In order to get to what they want. And that's so, part of the struggle. Oh, and you end up doing a lot of what I learned to call Joe jobs. No mm-hmm. offense to anyone out there named Joe, but the Joe job is, <laughs> is the, the job that you do that you're not passionate about in order to give you the opportunity to go and do what you are. Mm-hmm. So like I, uh, my very first job ever was working in a kitchen of a pizza restaurant. I knew that was never going to be my career. I did enjoy the job and I loved 50% off pizza, but I knew that was never going to be my career. You know, then I worked as a cashier at the Vancouver aquarium. And then I worked at this and I worked at, and all along the way I wanted, I wanted to be in theater. Right. And, and you work the Joe job. Did you have any Joe jobs? Joe jobs. Uh, I was an office assistant for like four months and then oh, a ju- work. and a junior part-time insurance agent which i mm-hmm. still am on the yeah. side mm-hmm. just to make extra money but yeah sorry are you a drama teacher i'm the drama teacher oh, yeah, nice, yes, yes, nice, yes. Yeah. oh yeah but what kind of joe jobs did you work mr Khan? i worked in an office that was oh. my first major job it was a summer job um and i got fired no no really? no <laughs> Yeah, it's a long story, but it was it was actually good because I was taking some 300 level math course that I was struggling through um calculus and yeah, I had this job that I had had to work at during the day and it was it was just so dull and people but I I knew, you know, it was to make money and eventually um uh, so it was tough to get through that because I didn't like it. Um, I didn't even like the people there. <laughs> um, they would throw me things like busy work to, to do and there'd be no purpose to it. Like photocopying things multiple times. And I answered phones and eventually that landed me in trouble because what my, my boss would phone once in a while to test me. And then he said, I didn't have a pleasant enough voice, which is why I'm on this podcast right now. Um, and so that's why that was his, uh, the line that he drew. And then there are some other reasons that I don't want to get into, but it was, it wasn't because of something I did. Yeah. So that was one of my Joe jobs. I had some other ones, other nice ones too. Like I, I typically look at entry level early customer service jobs. And there are some people that like scoff at them and downturn their nose. Like, Oh, that person just works at Tim Hortons. <laughs> but I think, that that person is doing their Joe job to work. I don't think anybody like comes out of the womb and says, yes, selling coffee at Tim Hortons is what I'm passionate about. And I'm going to do that for the rest of my life. And if that person is out there, I hope they're doing it. And I hope you're <laughs> having a blast. But most people would look that as 
I just need a job so I can get through university. I get that. And, and I don't want to make that person's day any worse. <laughs> so I try to be really nice to customer service people. Yeah, and you do need good customer service people. Of course you do. And that Absolutely. skill leads to a lot of, a oh, lot of opportunities. Huge, yeah. huge, yeah. 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 So, so, you, so you get to SFU. You're taking a general arts. Yep. How did you find political science? Was it one of your elective courses or was it a required course or, you know, how, how in the mix of everything that gets offered at SFU did you find that beacon of light? I ha okay, so I actually did take, um, I think, so my friend um, at the time, she was a criminology major. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a requirement to take a, pol a political science course. So then I just um, took it with her. Cool. And then I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. I was like, oh, this is so annoying. I, I hate it. I yeah, love yes. Yeah, I hated it. And then I just, I don't know, I actually just asked um, another classmate from another class. And I asked him, like, is political science good? And he's like, yeah, it's amazing. You should try it. So then I actually did try it. And it, it was great because... Um, there were, the thing is with these um, level 100 courses, oh. it's about theory and it's a lot of information and a lot of it is useless. But mm -hmm. once you get into the um, higher level courses, um, you delve deeper into certain topics and subject areas and that's what's interesting. And now, yeah. I also did my uh, bachelor's degree at SFU, so I, mm -hmm. I know the campus well. In your 100 level <clears throat> course, were you in one of the big lecture halls that held about 500 people? Some of them, yeah, yes. Yeah. But. So there's something to be said about, and, and you know, the, the folks, because our podcast is very popular. Of course, mm -hmm. all the university admissions people are hating what I'm going to say here. But part <laughs> of what a 100-level course is, is attrition. The 100-level course is designed to make everybody that really isn't serious the about university process. realize they're not serious about university. Um, so, so part of a 100-level course is, like, you're going to hate this course. Yes. You're going to hate this course. And, and that's important because if you can persevere through that, then you're going to love your 200, 300, 400 level courses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And I remember my last year of university, I took this one history course. It was a level 100 course. It was global environmental history. And obviously, I'm passionate about the environment. It had nothing to do with the environment. He was talking about like cavemen, something about fire. I honestly don't remember what I read in that course, but it caveman was made fire. Do you remember, do you remember <laughs> yeah, what the prof was? Do you remember this lecture? No, but I, <laughs> I was, I, I did my minor in history, so I do know oh, all okay. the profs in the department. What profs do you know? Uh, I, I had Mark Lear, who was the dean of the history mm. department at the time, and he, you know. he didn't have to teach this course, but he taught a one hundred level. Canadian history course, post-Confederation oh. Canadian history, and he just taught it because he loved it, and it was like the greatest course ever. I'm sure that there were a lot of first year... I, I took it. I was already done all of my 400-level theater stuff, and I was uh -huh. going back and doing my minor. Um, so I, I'm sure that there were a lot of, like, right out of high school first year students that hated it, but he would like bring his banjo and yeah. pick the banjo and sing his old Canadian folk oh, tunes. Nice. And I was, I sat in the front <laughs> row and hung off every word and I just loved him as a prof. What was, how was your experience with the teaching quality at university? Professors? Yeah. Ooh. Um, it was okay. <laughs> it was, well, there, it's just more them speaking to us and yeah. actually teaching. Well, the, the, did, they, you know, did, they, did you feel they were passionate about their topic? Some of them were. Yeah. Um, but I noticed that those classes tend to fill up easily. So um, yeah. Yeah, I, wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be yeah. able to like get into those classes. Um, but yeah, there was. I found that there were a lot of professors that were passionate. You just weren't good at teaching mm. um, at university. And mm -hmm. I, just, I know I kind of feel for them. Um, so I don't really complain about it. Uh, but that's what's interesting is that, like, we call university, we call it higher education. Mm -hmm. But the profs aren't there to teach. Most of them are there to do research. Yes. And then is. in order to stay on payroll, well, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll fund your research, but you have to teach this class. Mm -hmm. And then they go and begrudgingly teach the class, um, which isn't the greatest educational experience, but... Mm -hmm. I think at least when we did education, there were some profs there who who had taught in high school well, that yeah, I got yeah. Yeah. in UBC, and that was that was good to have. But there were still some in education who were not very good at teaching, like yeah. 
you didn't understand yeah. by the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And they would even contradict themselves in terms of teaching you to do mm-hmm. it a certain way and then not doing not, it themselves, not doing it that way. which yeah. is always weird for me. Yeah. Um, but like, did you find, um, did you find it useful eventually in terms of um, how you were taught in, in, in university? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I guess it was useful. Um, I think it, you just kind of get used to it. You get used to how professors teach. And I would just write notes. That's a really good question. I don't, I don't know how to answer that. Because <laughs> I know, like, you could, you could, mm-hmm. I just remember sitting there in a lecture hall mm-hmm. and thinking, you know, just like a lot of our kids do in high school, mm-hmm. you know, when am I going to use this, right? Yeah. And it turns out that, yeah, a lot of that I didn't have to use. Mm-hmm. But maybe, maybe there's something to be said for just the process of going through something difficult. Mm-hmm. There's that too, right? Yeah. Like training to focus when things are tough. Maybe there's something to do with that, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and even in education, I didn't find a lot of the theory useful until I was here in a school and l- figuring out what this was all about. Mm-hmm. And I found that going back to get a master's degree, that was way more useful because I'd already had the experience and thought about it, right? Uh-huh. But like, yeah. even stuff that I, that I was getting from my history lectures that I mm-hmm. thought, oh, maybe one day I'll use it. Mm-hmm. There's so much information being thrown at you that there's no mm-hmm. way you could possibly retain it all. Mm-hmm. I took a course on uh, Latin American history from 1492 to 1800. <laughs> and at the time, it was really interesting. But if if all of a sudden they were going to offer a high school course, we're going to add a new course to our social studies department. It's going to be Latin American history from 1492 to 1800. I would not put my hand up to teach that course because I don't feel like I know anything anymore. Or That's answer so the true. Jeopardy questions. Or, yeah. Right? Yeah. True, yeah. Like, my goodness, there's so much information, but your brain can only file away and, and be able to use so much of it. Yes, that's so true. Yeah. Um, I still have like my political science textbooks. I would sometimes just refer back to them. Oh, if I forget course, something, yeah. I'm glad I kept all, well, not all of those textbooks, but some of those textbooks. Um, yeah. But so what is political science in a nutshell? Yeah. Okay. I was really hoping you didn't ask that question. <laughs> ah, those are the best <laughs> oh questions. <laughs> I told my boyfriend about this podcast interview. He's like, what is political science? And I was like, I can't answer that. <laughs> Isn't that weird that you yeah, I don't, you, you I have think, a sense of what it is because you've studied yeah, a lot of it. But well, it's, well, it's it's kind of like this. Okay, this is where I start forming like incoherent sentences. Um, <laughs> poor gra- and I will have poor okay. grammar. But it's kind of like this study of institutions and policies and how things work, how power and politics work. Um, yeah, and there's just a lot of streams of it. There's theory, and then what's going on currently, so current affairs, and there's the um, domestic affairs and international politics. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of branches of political science, so that's why it's kind of hard to answer the question of the degree itself. But that's yeah. why we study yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Anything yeah. that you can define in two sentences isn't worth studying, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, that's why we continue to that's study. That's why we continue yeah. to study it, right? Yeah. Like, how do you define political science? You know, like, how do you define theater? Mm-hmm. <sighs> no way. Don't ask that question. I mean, ask the question because that's mm-hmm. how you generate great discussion. But, like, yeah, I hear you. I hear, like, that's such a hard question to ask. Like, define science. That's, that's well, for me, it's it's basically... The idea of it is to um, go through a process of learning to go through this method so that you can determine what truth is. Um, So by deduction and by different means of experimentation, you're looking for the truth of something. Mm -hmm. That's in a nutshell. That's in a nutshell. (laughs) That's in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, Political science... Um, I'm just wondering, because I don't know for sure, but does it have a lot to do with, like, I would think that there's some social psychology in there. Um, 
something to do with human nature because we are po political beings, right? Mm -hmm. The way we respond and react to certain situations um, and how groups of people make choices, does it have anything to do with that? I think, I think that's more with... I think that's more related to sociology, maybe. Mm -hmm. I haven't come across um, any courses that involve like social psychology and political science. Oh, really? It might have been mentioned in that 100 intro political science course, but I probably wasn't paying attention. Well, and you, <laughs> yeah. and you yeah. didn't go down that yeah. stream, uh -huh. right? Because yeah. one of the things um, that Mr. Kung and I are doing is we're, mm -hmm. we're teaching a blended course because we are finding that there is so much crossover. And the mm -hmm. same could be said about so much that we do in university. Like in my theater degree, uh, I did so much psychology and thinking, you know, what does it mean to be human and what does it mean to have mm -hmm. cognition and thought process mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff? Well, okay. Political science and the question that Mr. Khan is asking, the blend between poli sci and sociology, there probably are courses that do that. There, there must be. Maybe not at SFU, be. yeah. but, but like, I can see how there would be a blend there. I took a geography yeah. course because I had to, um, cause it was one of the check mark mm -hmm. SFU courses. And, and we spent this entire geography course talking about the history of the railroad. I was like, okay. nice. Cause now this is a geography course, but we're blending the history. Now I'm in. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Let's talk about the railroad. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so what was your interest in political science? Like what is, what are the interesting bits for you? Um, so apparently I like the boring bits. Of oh, <laughs> politics. Yeah, well, yeah. Interest yeah, because, interesting to you. Yeah, yeah, there is interesting to me, but, um, I noticed that a lot of, uh, students like the international, um, affairs, mm -hmm. but I was really interested in Canadian politics and policy, mm -hmm. um, probably because I live in Canada, mm -hmm. um, but according to other students, the material is really dry, but I just found it so interesting. Anything and, in know, like specific? Instance. That you've studied, that you found, wow, this is really interesting. I feel like you ask a lot of thought-provoking questions <laughs> that I wasn't prepared to answer. Um, uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of been a while because I did graduate last year. Mm -hmm. um, I did like environmental policy. Um, and I also just like um, learning about uh, the Canadian government um, and how our government system works because it's interesting that a lot of people don't know much about the Canadian government and just mm -hmm. say how our electoral system works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I found that crazy. Somebody would text me about um, this federal election and be like, I don't understand it. Like, what's going on? What are those numbers? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because I feel like this is something that everybody should know about. And things like voting systems. People don't know anything about voting systems. And it's just crazy because I feel like this is something that we should be taught when we're young, because we will all become voters. But mm -hmm. yeah, just public policy in general just interests me. So this yeah. is a question you probably get asked a lot as a poli sci okay. graduate. Do you have aspirations of being a politician? Ooh, okay, I think we're gonna go. Okay, <laughs> the thing is, I have made some poor choices when I was a teenager, <laughs> and I'm just scared that it might. Um be brought up to their surface <laughs> if I ever you run for a politician. Pro I don't think yes, you I have. And there's evidence too, so everyone has skeletons in their closet. Uh, so, this podcast no. is also gonna be evidence at yeah. some point. Okay, but <laughs> anything bad I've done, I I completely regret it and I apologize. <laughs> well there you go. <laughs> so is that admission People. of a, a potential political run? <laughs> yes, maybe. Nice. But right now I'm a public servant, so I don't know if I can run or maybe... Why don't you tell us about your public service? Ooh, I, I'm actually not allowed. Well, I oh. work for the federal government, but um, oh. I'm not... Are you a spy? Maybe. I'm... My title is officer. And an agent, but yeah. Which branch of the government? Are you allowed to tell us that? No. Now this has turned into an interrogation. Right? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. no, but I am a public servant, so... Okay. Ooh. And it's yeah. going well? <laughs> huh? It's going well? Yep, it's going well. And How well is it going? Uh, not, well, actually, I have to follow up on 50 calls from clients. So 50 calls? Yes. Wow. Um, yeah, because um, I was just moved to a different position. Um, it was just this cross-training opportunity. And um, so I was one of the applicants who were, um, <clears throat> who were accepted to work in that specific department. And um, basically what we're doing is 
trying to ease the workflow mm -hmm. um, for the regular officers. And um, yeah, so the work that we're doing um, requires sending letters and all these people are now like calling me, asking for um, information, asking questions. And yeah, and I took a half day today and I'm taking a half day tomorrow. So those voicemails are really going to pile up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You guys don't have to deal with voicemails, do you? No? no? I, I hate voicemail. I actually <laughs> haven't. Yeah, haven't voicemail. This is my fifth year at Delview. I haven't even set up my voicemail. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've only ever answered that phone like seven or eight times. I really don't wow. like voicemail. I prefer people texting me or emailing me. Email, you have a record of it. Oh. Yeah. It's easier to get back to people that way. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, that little red dot that appears on my phone makes me mad. Yeah, it makes maybe me mad. I should, maybe I should become a teacher. It's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> or go be a politician. Yeah, yeah. Could also not be too a politician. Late. So what other organizations are you involved in? Okay, so there's this organization um, called Empower the Future. So it's this nonprofit organization that aims to connect um, high school students with post-secondary students in a partnership that encourages personal, professional, and academic growth. So what we do is we run workshops. And they're in um, these workshops are mainly in the Surrey School District. Mm -hmm. And um, so these workshops cover topics such as um, dealing with financial stress, um, learning about post-secondary education, um, self-care, volunteering and its benefits, and entering the workforce. Yeah, so that's um, mainly what we do. And we also have um, different projects, too, on this side. Um, We've done a woman in STEM workshop series before, mm -hmm. cool. and um, we've also had like a mental health workshop, and uh, yeah, and then we recently released this ebook, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Life After High School: A Post Secondary Student's Guide to Success. Yes, yeah. Did you see that book? Did you yeah, look into it? I skimmed it. Yeah, yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. So that ebook, um, and I passed it on to. Oh, nice! Yeah. Great. Yeah. So it's essentially a survival guide. Um, for students who are entering post-secondary school or who plan to attend um, a post-secondary institution. Uh, yeah, and so that is basically it's basically our workshops in a book, mm -hmm. and as well as um, it provides a lot of information. So um, applying to post-secondary, um, admission requirements, uh, attaining financial aid, navigating through the post-secondary system. And there's also other equally important topics in my eyes, such as uh, mental health, um, time management, mm -hmm. self-care, mm -hmm. um, and career support. And it has, um, it contains um, sample cover letters, resumes, mm -hmm. um, a sample admissions essay, scholarship essay, um, and budget, budget sheets as well. Yeah. It's I really cool it's because yeah. not often do you get a guide like this that's so concrete. And by concrete, I mean like it starts off with a bunch of anecdotes from um, from students who are in university and in different apprenticeship programs yeah. or firefighters or whatever. Like yeah, it's just, you get to hear from those people in those yeah. things, those blurbs that they wrote. Um, and then, like you said, there's a lot of concrete things like letters and stuff like that, like examples of how you should do all of this stuff. That's so awesome. Yeah. That's really neat. That's really cool. Yeah, so it's just not geared to those who wish to attend university. It's just any post-secondary institution. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. you said this is an organization that you volunteer for. Yes, I volunteer. How did, how did you find this? Okay, this is so interesting because um, the founder and executive director of Empower the Future, her name's, um, her name's Shona and Ryan. Um, so I was volunteering for another organization. Um, I resigned from that organization. But um, what we did with that organization is we would um, give out scholarships. And she was actually one of the people, um, yeah, one of the applicants that I interviewed. Oh. And, then, and then I guess I resigned from that organization <laughs> and then joined her. <laughs> she yeah. recruited you yeah, while she was being interviewed. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> That's funny. Mm. And so, so besides this book, what else? What else are you guys? Um, what's coming up? Oh, so um, so we just released this ebook. Um, we're focusing on promoting it, mm. and um, I know that Shauna is planning to have a. A diversity in STEM series, um, workshop series. So, um, mm -hmm. so since we did the women in STEM series, um, what Shauna noticed was that a lot of um, other students were asking about these workshops. So it wasn't just women; it was just, um, say, 
students of color mm -hmm. and males. So she wanted to have one that's more inclusive. So um, it includes not only women, but um, people of color, um, those um, in the LGBTQA um, mm -hmm. community. And so now that's called diversity in STEM. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, what do they do at these workshops? These workshops? Oh, so um, so at the Women in STEM series, um, we had um, actual university professors come and talk about it. And um, the thing is, Sean is actually, um, she has a Bachelor of Science in uh, Physics. So she could, um, she actually would present most of these um, at these workshops. And she would um, bring in professors who would talk about um STEM. So um, there would be one more shop day that's like dedicated just to science. Another one would be to um, like med school. And she would bring these profs who would like talk about um, that field just to encourage mm, girls okay. and yeah, young women to um, pursue those fields. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and there were a lot of participants? Um, I believe so. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, when you were about to graduate, what resources did you have? You didn't have any of this stuff, right? No, I didn't. And I think because we were talking about this earlier, um, I think having this, having a book like that is really helpful because a lot of students <clears throat> don't know what to do or how to start when it comes to applying to both secondary and what to apply for. Um, I like that ebook because it provides it's essentially a guide and it'll help you start your journey mm -hmm. when entering post secondary school. Um, yeah, because, yeah, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I didn't care mm -hmm. about what where I would be. And I feel like a lot of students should care when you're in grade 11 and grade 12, and at least, like, look into schools, um, look at the programs that are available, and see what you could be passionate about, see what you can pursue. And I think that's super important, because I personally wasn't that kind of student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, it's great. But also, <laughs> I, I remember back to that time, and, you know, there wasn't anything concrete for me like I still yeah. like somebody could explain it all day to me and I wouldn't understand how things worked right yeah okay. but to actually see like this is really well done like to yeah. actually oh, see uh, materials here um yeah there are a lot of tools and resources in that mm -hmm. guide and even on our website um there's a list of um scholarships in that are based in Surrey or mm -hmm. offered um I don't know if they're offered only for like Surrey school students, but um, it's basically a scholarship database, um, which is pretty cool too. So it's all at empowerthefuture.info? Yes, that's yeah. the that's okay. website. And another thing um, about Empower the Future that I really like is that we are either um, undergraduate students or graduates, mm -hmm. and we've been there, we've done that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to get this information from students and, or people that are younger because we know what it's like and there's a lot of information that is missed say when um, maybe say when a career counselor or a career teachers mm -hmm. um educating students about post-secondary school or when uh, post-secondary schools themselves are having information sessions um like i learned a lot about like time management mm -hmm. and um uh, mental health is super important when you're a student as well and um but nobody is there to tell you that. So um, Empower Future also does that about um, we really educate things. Um, we educate students about like mental health and time management, self-care, because those things are also extremely important. Yeah. And, uh, how much are these workshops? Like if somebody oh, no. wants to. They're free. They're oh, free, yeah. And, free of charge. and the e-book yeah. is free as well? Yes, it's, it's free. Yeah, I'm looking yeah, so at it right now. You just have to answer yeah, two questions. Yeah, there's a survey. Yeah. Cool. Um, just, I guess, to figure out who's using it, right? Yes. And, yeah. it came, and, and Power of the Future came about because Shauna, um, she was the first generation to apply um, for university, and she didn't have much guidance. Um, so when she entered university, she noticed that many of her peers didn't have the same type of high school experience that she had. Mm -hmm. And they were actually like financially privileged. And when she was a university student, she didn't have financial aid, but she was able to receive over $70,000 in financial aid. So um, with her knowledge and stuff, she um, decided to create this organization to empower students, uh, mm -hmm. empower the future, right? And even though that students might not have a mentor in their life, um, she wants to be that type of person to ensure that she can provide that help mm -hmm. um, for inner city students. 
Yeah, speaking yeah. of scholarships and bursaries, there's all sorts of stuff out there that, yeah. you know, if you're not willing to go and search for it, then you'll never get it, right? Yeah, definitely. Well, and, and I don't know where the statistic comes from, but they say that, you know, X amount of money goes unawarded yeah. every year. It's <laughs> like, hold on, where's this money? How, yeah. do, how do I get this money? Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I think going and looking for scholarships is something that students definitely could receive some help with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And there's like very niche bursaries out there for oh, yes, certain cultures yeah, or, yeah. you know, we're looking yeah. for a Caucasian with a mustache who teaches <laughs> yeah. drama. I would be uh, all <laughs> over that. Does your organization help people that are going for their master's degree? <laughs> um. I, or are you just targeting? You can make I use think of it. Yeah, well, I think so. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna be writing entrance essays pretty soon again myself. So it's just like, oh man. Financial aid is here. Time management. Uh, you can give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> How to get a good See night's sleep? Uh, that's not happening. <laughs> not with baby. No. Yeah, there's even a campus life section. I'm not sure if there's a campus life one, but I think so. Yeah. Now, yeah. being an SFU Burnaby student. What is campus life? <laughs> I really wish that you didn't ask that. <laughs> like, the, there isn't a campus There isn't. Life? There isn't. Yeah, really? I don't think there's a no. only I went campus. to UBC. Yeah, yeah. Is the, is the, SFU is the kind of campus that you go home. Yeah. <laughs> you it's, don't a, stay. it's a commuter campus. Yeah, it's so. a commuter campus. Like, okay. There is a pub. Okay. I don't even think I ever once set foot in that pub. Really? <laughs> you, you go, you, you take your that. classes, you go home. Hmm. Yeah, it's not, the, it's not like UBC. Yeah. Mm, yeah, not like UBC at all. Yeah. But uh, well, in the winter you better go home, otherwise you might be stranded there. Yeah. Well, in the winter I, I, you might I, not even make it up there. Yeah. Make it up. I've been stranded on the mountain before. Have you? Yeah, I have. For how many days? Uh, three <laughs> hours. <laughs> three hours. <Okay. laughs> Just three hours. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I remember being at Production Way Sky Train Station waiting for the bus to go up the hill, mm -hmm. and standing there with my TA who was going to be giving the tutorial that I was going up there for, mm -hmm. and then him turning and looking at me and saying. Well, I'm not going. So I guess class is canceled. And I was like, nice. That was hilarious because I got it firsthand from the prof that wasn't going up the mountain. Right. Uh. Oh, yeah. I SFU is a good school. It's always highly rated in McLean's. Yeah. Well, and it's a good school. You know what's really yeah. interesting is like I, I did both. I did my <clears throat> bachelor's at SFU and my B.A. at UBC. So I've kind of had a little flavor of both. Um, I find that SFU likes to think of itself – as UBC's little brother, in the sense that, like, the little brother always feels like they have to compete with their older brother, right? Like, I you want have a little brother. Yeah. Like, I want, I want, to, I want to hang out with my siblings' friends. I want mm. to do this. I want to do that. And it's like always trying to catch up to the sibling. Whereas, like, I kind of feel like UBC just doesn't care about SFU. It's like, oh yeah, that that school on the mountain. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I liked about it is that even though SFU, like, I I really did get that impression from them. But even still, they're like, but we don't have to do everything our big brother does. As a matter of fact, we're going to take a different stance. And uh -huh. every prof that I spoke to in my history department was like, at SFU, you're going to get a very right-wing perspective. At SFU, you're going to get a very mm. left-wing perspective. Wait, wait. Sorry, no. UBC, you get a right-wing perspective. Like, UBC is uh -huh. very right, whereas SFU is very left-thinking. Really? And I thought that was very interesting. I assume that all universities were left-wing. Yeah. <laughs> well... That would make and sense. It would make well then 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 SFU likes to consider themselves even more left wing thinking. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They they consider themselves to be, at least in the history department, very, very leftist. Mm -hmm. Which I thought was very interesting. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and they said the UBC history department is not gonna give you this opinion. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, they'd say things like that. And and sometimes they wouldn't <clears> say <throat> UBC, but they'd be like, that other campus, you know, down by Point Grey, you know, they might say something different. <laughs> It's more right wing thinking. I'd be like, oh, that's very interesting. Like, it wasn't bitter, but it was just kind of like establishing themselves as like we're here too. Because huh. UBC has been around for so long, and UBC is like it, it has the feel of an Ivy League campus, right? Like it feels like that big major university, mm -hmm. and SFU is just as good. If not in some areas, maybe even better, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not saying that as an alumni because I'm an alumni of both. I can fairly say I've done both. Um, but I did get that feeling from mm -hmm. SFU. I get to get that feeling that sometimes they feel like they have to prove themselves in a UBC world. Hmm. I don't know that. that. That was my impression. No, I didn't know that because I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I didn't yeah. care about you, you SFU folks. Yeah. <laughs> like, do, do you mean like SFU, the school itself, or would you say the students? I would say the yeah. school itself. The school, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I, never, yeah. I never felt like the students are like, oh, could be going to UBC. No, no, I felt like students that read SFU were really proud to be SFU students, and this is the school I chose. Yeah. But I just kind of felt like the, the, the institution in general was like, we're here too. Don't negate us. Um, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, or maybe it's changed. I don't know, but I just always felt like um, we know that UBC's there. We know that UBC's this big, historic school, but we're here, too, and we're just as important. Do you miss high school? Kind of. You what, know what do you well, miss about high school? Well, um, well, I do miss high school. I don't. Okay, so I don't miss, like, the schoolwork, and I, did, I don't miss the fact that we would spend six, seven hours um, at school and then come home and spend another three hours doing homework. I don't miss that part of high school. Oh, that's because you participated. You were student council. You yeah. did all that. Yeah, so that's what I miss about high school. Um, I miss, oh, okay. Yeah, I miss participating in all of the committees and clubs and student council and all the spirit days. And I just love organizing events. Mm-hmm. I think that's what I really miss about high school. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I but now, now you get to organize, like, real events, Yeah, right? Isn't, yeah, isn't like, true. Spirit Day, Bake <laughs> Sales, it's so shallow. Yeah, I know it was fun. I, th- <laughs> I thought it was fun. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, fun. Yeah. And it's your yeah. first experience at organizing things, right? Yeah. What, what clubs what were you involved in when you were at Delview? Do you remember, Mr. Kung? Uh, th- thanks for giving. No. Okay, not okay really. every teacher thinks I'm on thanks for giving, but I never was. <laughs> no? Yeah, okay. I don't know why. Let's see. Oh, Let's well, quiz Mr. Kung. You could have gone volunteer hours regardless then. <laughs> um, Probably. Student council. Yep, this one. Meet a we? Yep. Uh, and that's all I know because that, oh, really? I was sponsoring both. Oh, okay. What um, else yeah. were you interested? I were think I was in Global Village as well. Okay, and then it's called the Culture Club now. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, cool. And then um, I remember Green Team. Okay. I was in Green Team a bit oh, too. Oh yeah, yeah. You were the like Worm Girl. I think it was Miss Unra. Yes. Who, who led? Yeah. Green okay. Team. And, yeah. And you didn't Ashley really was responsible for Worms. Yeah, yeah. And you never. came back. Even oh, a yeah. year after you graduated, or maybe a couple years. Yeah, you came and then. Back. I know somehow the box was gone. I think a janitor threw it out or something. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I was like, my you worms. You came back in my worms. My, yeah, what happened to what my worms? What were you doing with the worms? Um, so um, it was basically compost. Um, okay. but, I, but I did do a calculation. Um, it did save a significant amount of like garbage or waste. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I don't remember the calculation anymore but or how much. But it did make a difference. It was yeah. compost in a certain room? Yeah, in, in the food's room. Oh, in the so we would room. compost the food in the foods room, I think, all the food scraps. Uh, okay. yeah. So we don't have cool. a green team anymore. Yeah, we do. Really? No, no, it's changed. Yeah. Because Miss Anra is not here. Right. So now we have new teachers that have kind of spearheaded us. Now it's called the Delview Tree Huggers. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's called Tree Huggers? Oh, it's a cool name. Cute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, wow. I'm just curious because I want to know, you know, how, how things have shifted over time since you've been here. So, like, I'm, I'm curious to know because some, mm-hmm. some things unfortunately have died. And and yeah. are, worms, worms, or or <laughs> My worms. being reborn as something else, right? Like yeah. you know, G- Global Village is now called mm. Cultural Club. Um, meet a we. I don't think we do this year. I don't think we. Yeah, have we don't. Do we just don't do meet no. we. No, I stopped sponsoring it, yeah. and then Mr. Kim did it for a little while. Yeah, yeah. and he passed it yeah. off, yeah. and I don't think it's yeah. happening this year. And yeah. did you guys? Do you guys still have Helping Hands? Because I was part of Helping Hands as well. No. What was Helping think. Hands? Yeah, so um, that committee raised funds for um, illnesses and diseases. No. Diseases, yeah. No, so we definitely hands, don't yeah. have that. Yeah, and then I was in grad committee, but grad committee always, grad committee exists. always, always exists. exists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so mm-hmm. you guys don't have Helping Hands anymore? No. no. Wow. Well, that's the thing about committees, and it takes some people dedicated to yeah. doing the committee and right? i think that was my year um well i think it was our grad class that led all of those the helping hands to, yeah well, mm-hmm. helping hands i mean that's just it like a committee mm-hmm. isn't a committee a committee is the people that are mm-hmm. it is. together right yeah. Yeah. so uh, sometimes when there is a changing of the garter you know at a mm-hmm. high school students graduate 
sometimes these things don't continue after they're gone. And, and I've had that experience before in my youth, taking yeah. over from other committees yeah. that, you know, all of a sudden it's not the same anymore. And yeah. you just kind of, probably it's best to let this one go because it's just, you know, why, why keep it going if people aren't passionate about it? Well, and, and things like traditions mm -hmm. often have to have renewed vigor in order to stay a tradition. Mm -hmm. I was actually thinking about it just last night on my drive home, kiss a fish. Mm -hmm. Oh, we still do that. Mm -hmm. But I Great. want, but I wonder <laughs> How many of the new students really understand why? What? Yeah, and what, what that is means. going on? Yeah, <laughs> why the fish? Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. and and why it's an important tradition, and why we need to keep it going. Yeah. There's do or do we? Or do we? Or, or do we yeah. Right, and and I think we do. But then the question is, why? And let's come up with some rationale for why. And the big, the controversial one would be thanks for giving. Because it's been a tradition for mm -hmm. such a long yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, you hear even the food banks talk about how it's better to donate money. Yes. Yeah. Because they can get it for cheaper. Mm -hmm. get, they can get food in bulk for a lot cheaper. So to make your dollar um, stretch the dollars that you mm -hmm. donate um, as opposed to buying it yourself and giving them cans, right? Mm -hmm. So there's there's an argument there for you know, not running a canned food drive, inst instead running a donation drive. Mm. But, you know, it's is it our tradition or um, or do we change it so that it actually does something more effective? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there's also something to be said about don't bite the hand that feeds you. I mean, mm -hmm. would, would a charity organization ever complain about our donations? No, yeah. no. but, yeah. you know, if you, if you look at the, the, the data... <laughs> Mm -hmm. And if you want to make your um, the time that you spend doing this more effective, then there's an argument for not doing a canned food drive, mm. right? I, I actually I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard about that too. Yeah, so that's that's a very interesting phenomenon. It's about the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's about the people. And just like yeah. you guys had a your year was really active and. Mm -hmm. And, and things like that. We've had years where mm -hmm. it's not as not the same way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the school mm -hmm. is about the people who are here, mm -hmm. the staff and the students. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm just curious, though, for Kiss a Fish, um, the funds are raised. Who does it go to? Which charity? I was told that that did go to the food bank. Oh, really? That, That's that, good. That yeah. Kiss a Fish did go to the food bank. Yeah, the, the whole well, donations good. phenomenon is, is interesting because – People, sometimes they don't do their research um, or sometimes like you never know. Mm -hmm. And there, there are websites yeah. where you can check like mm -hmm. uh, what's that one charity search or something oh, like that search. where you can, <clears throat> when they like give each charity a rating mm -hmm. so you can look it up. Um, of course, some of it has to go to administration, Yes, um, but you're hoping a larger percentage goes to where it's needed. Um, and then there's the issue of, you know, does it actually help mm -hmm. or is it just something that you feel good about giving money to something mm -hmm. and it doesn't really help? Yeah. Right. So it's a whole ball of wax or can of worms, <laughs> <laughs> which you're yeah. more familiar with. Yeah. Cans and worms. <laughs> story of W. <laughs> you guys should donate it to um, an environmental group, you know, to help yeah. teenage Ashley. Yes. <laughs> Did you, and why is, it sounds like Chewbacca's in the building. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> um, did you did you go to the climate strike? No, I didn't. I was mm -hmm. working. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm an adult now. <laughs> yeah, you have <laughs> well, obligations. Yeah. Just think about not for profits. What about the organization that you're working for or or volunteering for? Is there a need for donations for Empower uh, tomorrow? Oh, Empower the Future. Empower the oh, Future. Yes. Um, <laughs> No, so we don't really ask for donations from the community. Um, we just apply for grants. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so um, we've been funded by um, Coast Capital, um, uh -huh. UBC, UBC, and um, the City of Surrey cool. so right. far. Yeah, so it's just through grants. Um, right. yeah. yeah, we don't believe in like raising money or um, charging students no, no, or for workshops either. So uh, we just want to ensure that everything's free. So we try yeah. our best to um, apply for as many grants as we can. Sure. Yeah. But but again. Any gift is a gift, right? Yes, that's true. Right. Yeah. So. 
Yep. So you're you're well funded. Yes. That's right good. Now. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So any anything else you um anything else that's new for you or um anything your any projects that are coming up oh, you're excited projects. about? So um no actually I don't. Um because right now we're working on the um diversity in STEM series, the workshop series. I know why I keep saying series workshop, this workshop series. So what kind of work do you actually do as so part I, of this? So I'm actually just the um, administration director right now. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm the one taking the meeting minutes and stuff and oh, okay. um, yeah, and planning the meetings. And I'm the one who um, uh, applies to grants as well. Um, yeah, so I like that. That is an art. Role. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Applying for grants? Yeah, There's an art yeah. To that. I just completed one yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah. So I just I'm more comfortable with admin work. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have really great. I, my communication skills aren't that great, so I try to stray away. Well, you from get that. grants. Yeah. So w- what? <laughs> what is the? What is the? Like, what is the skill involved with applying for a grant? Um, well, we actually just fill out an application. I guess the skill would be writing skills. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Because you got to be convincing, right? Yes, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so just definitely writing skills. So, yeah. yeah. There are no interviews. Uh-huh. Hopefully there are no interviews. <laughs> then I'm not applying for that grant. Maybe uh-huh. I'll just hand that task to somebody else. Because <laughs> we're always talking to yeah. our students about, like, why do you need to know how to write well? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, I've I've um, filled out grant forms before, mm-hmm. and I've gotten money, and I'm – like that's one reason because mm-hmm. sometimes you you need to get that stuff yeah. and if you can't write a few paragraphs about why you need it or convince yeah. people with evidence that you you need something then you're never going to get it yeah. right so the, there's definitely a skill to that yeah definitely i think yeah writing so good is for you yeah writing is extremely <laughs> important i'm always trying to brush up on my writing skills i have books on punctuation <laughs> uh-huh. yeah and I don't know. In English, do they teach you actual like grammar skills and punctuation and writing? Yeah. Would you know? Yeah, we do. Do you do? Um, do? Like, I just remember like in, reading novels a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in terms of like, yeah. I remember when I was in high school, it was worksheet after worksheet after worksheet after worksheet. <laughs> and, and that was not an effective way to learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. So what, what uh, Mr. Kong and I try and do is to practice actual writing. Rather than doing the worksheet, I guess the the kind of sports analogy is we're trying to give the students more game situations than the practice. Not to say that practice isn't important, but we're kind of saying that the game is the practice in this situation. Mm-hmm. So rather than doing these 12 worksheets on how to use a period, what if we just gave you an essay to write? And mm-hmm. we'll talk about punctuation as part of that essay. Oh, well, that, also we yeah. find students are at different levels at grade 10. Yeah. Um, um, there are some who use proper grammar and everything. Mm-hmm. They just It's just the ideas. And mm-hmm. some who have ideas, but they don't know how to put sentences together properly mm-hmm. or paragraphs together. And so we find a lot of individual time to, to mm-hmm. work with those students on their weaknesses and strengths. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're a proponent of grammar school. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All my answers and, are kind of. <laughs> yeah. Um, so mm-hmm. d- have you been working on that yourself? On grammar? <laughs> on grammar. Uh, well, my writing skills are getting better. I noticed that I'm always having trouble translating my thoughts into sentences. Huh. I, think it's, I think my mom's an influence because she's always saying random things and she's not saying things correctly she'll be like where you are instead of where are you i don't know and i just noticed that it just really it's rubs like off on me. yeah it rubs off on mm. me and i don't know and i think and the thing is i respond to her the same way okay. so i'll just say it's like, just your little language yeah just so she understands it and then i think that's just really influencing me so then sometimes i wonder like oh how do i like is that the right preposition to use uh-huh. uh, but yeah so, did you help write any of this book? Life yes, I'm one of the authors. You're one of the um, authors. Yes. Um, so, oh, I wrote... What, what did you write? Um, okay, so... Yeah, Ashley Prasad, started, Administration yes. Director of Empower the Future. Mm-hmm. And then if you go down... Okay. Um, if you, 
Okay, I think you have to keep going down. <laughs> no, I think. But um, it's just. Uh, Oops, I lost it now. There's that one um page that's from Empower the Future, our message to the readers. Okay. That was me, and then I wrote some of the articles. Um, um, some of these articles. Uh, no. no. <laughs> okay. The um the faces that you see are the students who wrote that article. Oh, I see. Um, I wrote. I think I'm applying to um, university. It's the um, I usually wrote the ones I have to do with academics. Um, oh, cool. Those articles. Um, yeah, it's funny. I should have offered to edit it, but I guess I was super busy and then I didn't. Um, but when I was reading the published ebook, now I noticed like little grammatical mistakes that I made too, and I'm like, oh, I should have edited. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We published a book yeah. in our course really? last cool. year, and yes, that was a huge part of it. Like the wow. editing, yes. Um, yeah. Like I'm very persnickety mm -hmm. about, you know, how yeah. great word by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very very fussy about mm -hmm. how things are written and spelling, and I I can like I can spot that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it yeah. came in hand, like I, since high school because I was yeah. the editor of our newspaper mm -hmm. in junior high. And I would like, you know, all the students working with me knew that mm -hmm. I was very fussy. <laughs> um, and so I would hound people about certain things that they written and, and stuff like that. You know, what a terrible, terrible person I was. <laughs> Persnickety. <laughs> Persnickety person. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it was a, uh, it took a long time to edit our book. And I, I can imagine any piece of writing, yeah. like editing is a long process. Yeah. And to go over it over and over again. Yeah. It's I tiring. Think yeah, I think it was almost a year. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it's been – yeah, because we started in November of last year, and then we just recently um, released, I don't know, maybe last month or a couple of weeks ago. Good. Um, yeah. Yeah, it took a long time just because there's so much information, and yeah. you just kind of have to think, like, how can we condense this and make it simple? Mm -hmm. Because high school students are reading it, so you don't want it to be, I don't know, too convoluted. Mm-hmm. So, is yeah. there a is there a paper version or is it? A yeah, e so yes, I do have some paper versions. Um, I don't have them with me. It's actually with the you should send director. some. Yeah, yeah send some yeah. our way because this yeah. is really useful oh. for for yeah, um, our our kids for yeah. sure. Yeah, especially for grade eleven and twelve students. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's really well done. So mm -hmm. congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. To all yeah. of you. Yeah, there's a lot of people who um, contributed to that booklet. Um, the graphic designers spent a lot of time um, designing as well as Shauna. She did a lot <laughs> on that mm -hmm. book, too. There's a lot of back and forth um, with the editing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Life After High School, Post-Secondary Student's Guide to Success. Any parting words? Oh, parting words. Um, I don't really have any parting words. Any advice? <laughs> you know what? I was thinking about this. Um. All I have to say to students is to be kind to yourself. Um, mm -hmm. I notice that young people and students, well, like the youth, we've been through a lot. And humans are really resilient. So one thing I learned in um, university is that you have to deal with failure. Um, mm -hmm. You have to learn to deal with failure because you might be so successful in high school, but it might not be the case in university. So just be kind to yourself. Um there's not many people who um, went through post-secondary and left post-secondary without um, a degree of failure. So just be kind to yourself. Um, and, yeah, that's all I have to say. That's not really good. No, that's <laughs> yeah. great because yeah, yeah. I we, was thinking I think, the same yeah. thing. And like, yeah. we need to stop comparing ourselves um, to each other. Um, um, because at the end of the day, um, no matter what you go through, you're the one who picked yourself up. Sure, there's people who've helped you along the way, but you're the one who um, carried yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's end with mm -hmm. that. Thank you, Ashley Prasad. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for having me.